Welcome everyone to the Success Elevated Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Hayden Lee, and I am joined this week by my co-host. I feel like this is like, this is a streak we're going on, Katie, where you're co-hosting with me. This has got to be like third or fourth in a row now. Yeah, we do have a streak going on. We Hayden. do have a streak going. Good episodes, yes. Uh, managing, managing partner here at Spot On Solutions, Katie Harris. Um, Katie, thanks again for co-hosting as always. Uh, it's always fun to have you on and we can, I feel like sometimes we have to like, um, meld our brains together so that we can accurately like get some awesome questions. And in this case, get a really cool guest onto the podcast, which I'm very excited about. Um, she's gone viral on the internet. She's been on all sorts of really, really cool television shows and done some really cool things in the, the business and entrepreneurial world. Uh, Sarah Williams, co-founder of Arizona Goat Yoga. Thank you. Awesome. I'm excited to be here. Sarah, this I feel is like, like be... applause. Applause should have like. Came yeah, we need. I need a button. I need to find like a button a on the. <laughs> you can just say a... the goatest show on earth. The goatest show on earth. That's a great yeah. description. Well, and I was really looking forward, Hayden, to how you were going to introduce Sarah because I was like, oh, which one of her titles and businesses and awesome things are we going to put with her? So, Sarah, really happy to have you on here and have this conversation. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Sarah, let's let's talk about um, for those of our audience that maybe don't know a little bit about who you are and if, are not familiar with your really really cool awesome story. And like I said, it's gone viral. You've been on all of these, you you know, like reality I, shows. Yeah, like all that stuff. Like one of my favorites, The Amazing Race. Like that's like seriously one of my favorite shows of all time. I remember growing up. Like I don't know what season they're in now. It's got to be like. 30 or something. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch We're of them. Season like, 30. I think they're probably on 36 right now. Yeah. Yeah. See, there you go. Like there's been so many seasons. I remember growing up as a kid watching it and sitting down with my family uh, in the evenings and we'd all gather around that we'd tape it back in the day when that was a thing, right. If we weren't going to be able to watch and anyways, just you've done so many cool, awesome things that I feel like we've got to give our audience a little background into who you are. So if you don't mind, talk to our audience for a little bit, give us, give us your background who you are, what is goat yoga, how all of this got started. And yeah, okay. this might be a lot and good luck. That's to okay. Your That's okay. So in high school, I was a synchronized swimmer. And so that was pretty fun. National level synchronized swimmer. And when I got out, I started coaching synchronized swimming, traveling all over the world. Um, and I wanted to move out as soon as I graduated. And so I started a swim lesson business. It was a great way. I would just go around to people's houses and I realized as I could charge them more and more money for the more kids they brought in. So the whole neighborhood would bring kids over and I would teach all these kids swim lessons. <laughs> and then in that, uh, in that pools, I love that you were like, I will come to your pool and take your money. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was broke. I didn't have a pool and I wanted to move out of my parents' house. So I just drove around to people's houses and <laughs> taught their kids. That's awesome. To um, and so I did that. I went to ASU, got a degree in exercise science. And that whole time I'm working at a gym and just getting to know people, doing personal training. And they were taking 30% or 70% of my income. I was only getting 30%. So I, again, I told people, I'll come to your house and personal train you. Yeah. <laughs> so I started a little business like that. Um, in that process, I became a CrossFit trainer and I started doing boot camps at the schools and I built up a CrossFit kids program, teaching kids parkour. So I needed to find an interesting way to get kids into the gym and parents into the gym. And um, so I did parkour. So it was this mom that was teaching parkour <laughs> and that got me on American Ninja Warrior. So I was on um, 2013 on American Ninja Warrior. Wow. And then uh, all the kids thought I was super cool from that. So yeah, I, guess I, think, I think you're super cool for that, Sarah. <laughs> Again, another just reality TV show that is just like one of the biggest shows in America. Oh yeah, I did that once in 2013. No big deal. Anyway. <laughs> so that was the start of all the reality show stuff. I had initially auditioned for Man vs. Wild Bear Grills, and I went in with like this tooth necklace and doing all these parkour tricks. And the <laughs> casting guy called me over to the side and he's like, I think you'd be better suited for American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we flew out to Baltimore, did American Ninja Warrior. And that's when I realized telling people you got on a TV show really helps your street cred. So yeah. I built up a really big kids program doing that because um, all the kids would say, my instructor was on American Ninja Warrior in every class. I'd be like, we're going to get on YouTube, guys. That's so <laughs> cool. And I had kids at the time. So I'm kind of um, my kids are going through the classes and they're helping me build the program and stuff. So that was kind of the first 
eight years after college and building up those businesses. I did the fitness and the swim lessons. And then I uh, was really interested in paddle boarding. And so Arizona didn't have any paddle boarders yet. So I actually started the paddle boarding in Arizona. It's a lot of people have been inspired by it and copy it. And um, <laughs> I've been at that business for about 10 years, but nobody goes paddle boarding in Arizona in the winter, except for Canadians. So about three years into that business, I'm like, I need something else. And my friend had actually been on American Ninja Warrior also as a goat whisperer of Gilbert. So I'm like, we should just do goat yoga, like totally set it up as a joke, did it in her backyard. And we had maybe 10 of our friends come and we recorded it and we put it on Facebook. And so, you know, a couple of people were like, oh, you guys were on American Ninja Warrior and thought we were cool. And a few news stations were following us. And so the news station saw us post goat yoga. And um, it must've been a really slow news day, but they were like genius women entrepreneurs. <laughs> and so we had eight people in the backyard. And then within three months, we had a hundred people in her backyard with these goats that we'd put costumes on. And we just were like, crap, we better come up with an LLC and start a business. So that's kind of like a quick rundown of everything. There's a lot of little businesses mixed in there that didn't work. That was the title, Hayden, right there. Genius woman entrepreneur. When you were like, what do I call you? That what do I call it, this right? episode? Genius woman yeah. entrepreneur. That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. The, the, the whole conversation, it like, and I love how you describe the story, Sarah, because it just seemed like very organic, right? Like that's just kind of who you were. You're like, oh, I'm just going to go start doing swimming lessons. And oh, I guess I'll just start teaching, you know, I'll become a personal trainer. And then, oh, I started doing parkour. So I guess I'll try out for American Ninja. Like it just seems very like natural because that's just who you are. And that's, I feel like some of the best businesses that get started that people have success with, or that, you know, maybe, maybe something as simple as like going viral on the internet, it always comes back to like, these are things that generally that people are like passionate about. And that like, it just kind of becomes who they are. You weren't planning on going viral with goat yoga, but it did like it blew up and became this huge thing that now people copy, right? That other people are doing, but like, it wasn't something that you were like, oh yeah, we're going to turn it into this huge giant business. You were like, well, let's just do something fun with our friends, you know, on a weekend, you know, or whatever. And it, it like, it just turned into something really cool. And I, I feel like that's, that, that speaks really well to our audience because a lot of our audience, it just something like when they start their business, when they own their business, it's just because it just seemed like a natural progression of things. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm good at this trade or I'm good at this skill. Let me start this business, right? And, and I, I love that that's kind of the genesis of this for you. It's really cool. Well, and none of it had any overhead. And so when I look back, um, you can always be scrappy and put hard work in. And then initially, you know, you can, once that's successful, you can start adding in overhead somehow, you know, like, learn from other people. I was working at the gym first and then I decided, okay, I'm just going to go to a park now. And then when I started making money, I would buy more equipment, but I didn't go into debt for anything. And so there wasn't a lot of risk because it was just, you know, my hard work. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's funny that you just say there wasn't a lot of risk, right? There wasn't a lot of risk with overhead. True. Yeah. But when you were first telling your story, I'm like, this woman is not afraid of anything, right? Like right. you'll, <laughs> you'll go risk it. Right. Cause I think there's a difference when we think about entrepreneurs. Um, it's like, okay, it's one thing to make a good decision, right? And have low overhead. But I think one thing that is inherent in entrepreneurs, and I think you're a great example of this, is this willingness to take risk, this willingness to put yourself out there, this willingness to give it a try. Right. Is that yeah. have you just always been like that? You're like, let's just try it. Well, I've had to deep dive into why I am the way I am because there's not a lot of people like me. Um, and I know that entrepreneurs are kind of like that. And I do think my parents were addicts. And so I think there's a little bit of fight or flight in there and that I like the adrenaline rush when I've um, broken it really far down because I realize most people aren't like this. And so I am like trying to understand myself better and part, I enjoy that adrenaline rush and I enjoy the not knowing what's going to happen next. So that might be part of that. I don't know. That's super interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. I know. I, I think the, yeah, the, we, we, this is a common theme that we have when we, when we interview business owners on this podcast, that it, it, at least it's a common question that I always ask because I was not like 
it, it's not something that I feel like comes naturally to me, like this entrepreneurial spirit. And so it's always fascinating when I get to sit down with these, like, um, Katie, you call them, is it uh, chronic entrepreneurs? What, what the, you have like a word for it, right? That it's just like people can't help but want to start businesses, and there are like people out there that are like that. that I, right? Like you're a serial entrepreneur. Serial like, entrepreneur. Oh, there you go. And I am stuff. never content, but I think that's okay because yeah. that's part of the adrenaline rush, and I enjoy yeah. it. Because if I'm like if everything's just fine and kind of boring, I get bored. <laughs> Well, and I know this because Sarah and I have spent some time together and had some conversations and there's something about this spirit of like learning something like this is so fascinating. This is so interesting. And next thing you know, like you just kind of naturally like I could turn that into a business. (laughs) It's like, oh, I really, I really want this. I could turn that into a business. And next thing you know. You're like, oh yeah, maybe we need an LLC. Like, just like you were saying. (laughs) My friends are kind of like, you don't have to monetize everything. I'm like, I have no interest in software engineering or like I have a little world that I want to monetize, but there's a whole world. Like, I don't care about healthcare, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Like, I I love that. that. That whole piece to the conversation, again, is is missed. And again, I think it goes back to the whole idea of going viral, right? At least that, that that's that's a piece to this that I, I feel like, um, like people can start businesses, people can make plans and people can, you know, okay, I'm going to go start a carpet cleaning business, or I'm going to go start, I'm going to go become a personal trainer and, and start training people. But the, the extra piece that it seemed like to goat yoga and to the things that you've done is there's this like virality thing that's happened, right? That it's gone viral for you. And that's like exploded this business for you overnight how do you plan for something like that? Is that something that you felt like you planned for or just happened? You're like, Oh my gosh, what do I do now? I've got a thousand text messages or phone calls, or, you know, people are now wanting to do this goat yoga thing or whatever it is. Yeah. Is that something you plan for or, or what did you do if you didn't plan for it? How did you overcome that challenge after it happened? So goat yoga was really big. Um, And, you know, I, when I worked my way doing the CrossFit kids, I was, I got up to like three, 400 kids a week. And that looked pretty successful in the whole realm of like kids fitness. And, but then goat yoga was something totally different. And I just had local recognition for the, you know, the CrossFit kids stuff. And so to have it go all over the world, like we were on a PBS show called startup for genius women entrepreneurs. We made it on the cover of USA today. It was like what people make in every industry. That was a little uncomfortable. (laughs) Because all of our friends that have been making fun of us suddenly were like, wow, they're actually making a lot of money. Yeah. And, um, so that was probably, you know, people were proud of us in the beginning because they're like, oh, look, you're a dumb idea, made it on the news or whatever. But over the years, because we've been in business eight years now, um, people now question, they're like, oh, you're still doing that? And we're like, oh, yeah, it's actually a pretty big deal. So we've we've had to step back on the bragging because we were young and we were so proud of ourselves in the beginning. And, um, now we're like, oh yeah, we just have a business. We have to go to work. Um, and so that part's been hard because initially people are proud of you. And then I think maybe it's a little bit of jealousy. And so you have to kind of just treat it like a job, not like it's your life. Um, and then when everything exploded, we were actually just doing it at my business partner's house (laughs) and we had a hundred people coming and just parking cars by her pasture. And across the street where it is this master plan community and they kept calling the police on us and the police would come over and just play with goats. <laughs> and oh then they said, you guys are going to need to find a actual facility. So honestly, we said a little prayer and we drove around the neighborhood, like only three miles away was an addiction rehab facility. That was a ranch. So it's this huge rodeo ground ranch and we could rent. They're just using, they have 10 pastures. They're just using them for horses. And we said, can we rent out a pasture? And so a hundred bucks a class, they let us rent out a pasture and then there's parking enough for a whole rodeo. And so we could have as many people as we wanted now come into classes. And, um, we just actually built a little store in front after seven years, we're like, I think we're going to stay in business. So we built a little store in front of our pasture and the mayor just got up at a big count, uh, city council meeting last week. And she said, we'd like to thank Arizona goat yoga for putting Gilbert, Arizona on the map for tourism. So that was pretty cool. After all these city ordinances, we've been breaking and everything. <laughs> we got some appreciation. Oh, I love it. Well, again, the, the challenge with going viral, and I, I love that you highlighted this because I, it's something, it's a feeling I've felt for sure. So I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a safe, a safe space. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I have a hundred percent felt this way where felt the jealousy thing a little bit, right. Where it's like, 
Oh, those, the only reason that they're making all this money is because they went viral one, you know, they made one video and it went viral and it exploded. Right. And I love that. That was a challenge that you didn't, again, didn't anticipate that there was going to be people that were like, Oh, either kind of jealous or like, Oh, they, they didn't really start a business. They just went viral with one video. And I love that you kind of just pushed beyond it. And we're like, nope, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep trying these things. We're going to, you know, maybe break a few city or ordinances along the road. Right. And we're going to figure this thing out. And it's, well, you go. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. Right. I, I love that whole story. And um, again, with, with that entrepreneurial spirit that you have, um, it almost kind of feels like you have to kind of be an outlaw at, at times. Right. Like, again, you're, it's not like you were breaking all of these laws and should have been thrown in jail, but it, like, this mentality of, okay, we can no longer do it in my friend's backyard. So what are, what we're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to drive around and, oh, we found this pasture that we're going to rent, right? It, it, it was never a planned thing. It was kind of just spur of the moment and you're kind of just on the run and we're going to figure this thing. And I, and I think that's so cool that it's just so in your desire of who you are. They're like, we are going to figure this out one way or another whether we're doing it in my friend's backyard or we're renting a facility or we're now going to build a storefront, right? Whatever it is, we're going to figure this thing out. And well, um, and I think there's a lot of viral videos out there that people don't ever do anything with. And so yep, they can, I mean, yep. there's luck involved in every entrepreneurship, but there's also a lot of hard work to turn it into a business, you know? Yeah. And so we, we work 40, 50 hours a week on this silly idea, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of people that are going viral and making some dumb video on the internet or whatever, right. That, that like, don't do anything with it, right. but it's another thing to like, have this thing that blows up. You get all this traffic, you get called a genius woman entrepreneur, right. By the, the news channels. And then you actually like, Hey, why don't we actually do something with this and support our families and take That's care the hard of work part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that takes me back, you know, when you were joking about your friends telling you, you don't have to monetize everything. Well, at some point, like you do, right? yeah. because it's, Why too not? Much, it's too much work to not monetize it. So I wanted to maybe step into that a little bit, right? What does it look like? Or what was it like for you? What tips might you have for somebody who's like, Hey, I do have this big idea. I am in this. I did catch a little luck, right? Things are starting to go. You know, what tips do you have when the hard work comes when you're that entrepreneur, anything that stands out to you that made a difference? I think the biggest thing, and people don't want to do this because um, they're afraid that they'll look dumb. And I learned this from the Barnum and Bailey book, which I have read probably eight times, but there are customers everywhere. And I live in Phoenix. There's so many people in Phoenix. So a lot of people just don't know about your business. You can't start a business and just think it's going to happen that all of a sudden you're going to have customers come to you. So 90% of our classes are new participants, every class. So it's mostly tourism. So the key thing that I learned from the Barnum and Bailey books is you have to do the marketing. Like you're not going to just have people magically show up at your class because you had a great idea and you wouldn't believe how many people think that they have a great idea and that people are just going to give them money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that, that, that's a hundred percent accurate, right? Like it, it, there's so much more planning that comes into it outside of the great idea. Yeah. Um, I, I look at all of the, uh, again, this is, I'm surprised you guys didn't end up on this uh, reality show, but Shark Tank, cry. right? <laughs> right, yeah, right. The, 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 there are all these awesome, sometimes great, great ideas on Shark Tank. And a lot of times, you know, five years later, you don't hear about that business anymore. And it's because they didn't plan. They they had this awesome viral idea. They got on a TV show, um, you know, whether they got, a, you know, support from one of the sharks or not. A lot of times those businesses still go belly up because there's no planning. They have, they're not doing the things outside of going viral or having this great idea that are necessary to, to have a successful business. Right. So actually um, shark tank called us and we were like, we don't even know how we would scale it. So the, a, a <laughs> business in Utah that had um, rent, that hired a yoga instructor and then rented petting zoo goats went on and they ripped them to pieces. They're like, there's no way we could sell this. So it was kind of good that we didn't go on. <laughs> It worked out great. Then you're like, oh, the one of those people that copied us, they can go get yelled at. They can at. go drive um, to California yeah. with a bunch of goats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's great. And again, the there's there's more to it than just having a good idea. We talked to um, we t we talk to business owners all the time. Obviously, that's kind of what we do. Digital marketing. We have clients all the time that come to us and are like, how do we plan this? How do we make this happen? Um, I talked to a client the other day that was you know really concerned with 
we've got to figure out client acquisition, right? Like that's a piece of this. And I, and I love having those conversations because these people care about making this plan work and making their good idea work. And again, right. it, it's great to have a good idea. It's better if you have a plan for it. Um, yep. and that's, and that would be my argument. And Katie, you know, another person that I would consider a genius woman entrepreneur, um, you've done this a lot over the last decade, right. Of owning spot on solutions. Like you've had to pivot and make plans and, and make adjustments to the business plan because it's one thing to have a great idea. Oh yeah. We want to build websites for people and help run them help run ads for them. But it's a completely other thing to actually have a game plan of how you're going to do it. Well, and, and you might have the best game plan ever made and it still doesn't work, right? That is yeah. true. You got to be willing to pivot. Yeah. I've made a lot of plans that I was like, well, that plan sucked, right? <laughs> that plan's not working. And that's where, that's why most businesses don't survive because I guarantee you, you can have the luck, you can have the plan, you can have all those things lined up, but it's still hard. Right. Yeah. And so the, ability sometimes the cops get called on you and, and you can't no longer, you can no longer do it in your friend's backyard. Right. And, and, not, <laughs> and not all of us have goats for the cops when that yeah. happens. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I mean, it's hard, it's hard work. And so no matter what the business is, right. I've never talked to an entrepreneur who's made it to year three, year five, year seven, year 12, whatever, right? This says, oh yeah, man, I had a plan and I just worked and it just happened. Like that's, that's not the reality of it. Like there is ups, there are downs. There are moments when you doubt yourself. There are moments when others doubt you, right? And so to be able to overcome that, I guess, and, and do it, it's, it's hard. And it's, it's something that that's why when you talk to entrepreneurs, there's so much kind of love and passion and um because they're just so much invested in well and you really do have to talk to entrepreneurs because other people don't really get it it's like why do you not just go clock in go to work come home and have a peaceful night because i'm thinking about businesses 24 7 you know yeah. and so it is good to have entrepreneur friends and um your your other friends can be separate you go on hikes with them or go to lunch but you don't need to talk to them about business because they just don't understand yeah it does it doesn't make sense so so I think that, hey, that's a good point that I think is worth pointing out in this, right? If you're in this journey and you're like, okay, I've, I've caught some luck. I'm, my plan's yep. working. Like things are going. Now pay attention, I think, to who you surround yourself with, right? Because who you surround yourself once you're in the trenches matters. Yeah. Well, it's that, uh, it's that cheesy high school quote that we all heard, like, show me your friends and I'll show you your future kind of a thing, right? Like, like that's, that's, it's accurate, right? Like it's why people say it. it's why it gets told to you at a young age or whatever. My, my parents used to repeat that all the time. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. And thankfully I have pretty decent friends. And so I feel like I turned out okay, but it, it uh, it's, it's totally the truth. It, and when it comes to business, that's again, a forgotten thing. People don't network. People don't go to event shows, right? Like you, you both met at a great, like it's not a trade show, but a, an event where you're able to come together and network with other entrepreneurs and learn from each other and learn from, you know, people like Brett and, and get in Dan and, or whoever else is there that you're able to learn from these awesome people and come together and network as a team. And that well, way and you can learn to grow together. So when you see people doing better than you, it's like, if she can do it, I can do it. <laughs> you know? you, you right. don't have to get in this comfort zone of like, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty awesome. And then you see somebody a little bit higher and they're like, they're just a regular person. Why can't I do yep. what they're doing? And it, you know, it just gets, keeps you going. I love it. I love it. So I'm, I'm going to pose a question to you, Sarah. Um, and Katie, you can jump in on this too. Cause obviously, you know, entre entrepreneurship's in your blood as well. But what are, what are some things um, if, you know, we, our audience are like, people that own home service businesses that are out there, um, you know, cleaning people's carpets, building homes, plumbing, HVAC, whatever it is, right? Talk a little, maybe give some advice to, you know, I don't know if you want to direct it specifically to our audience, but just to business owners in general. Um, someone that maybe doesn't have this entrepreneurial spirit quite as much as you do, Sarah. Um, what are some tips that you would maybe offer to them to kind of help them maybe grow that spirit a little bit? Or this is maybe a, the, the flip side to that question. Maybe they do already have that spirit. How do you, what are some recommendations you would give to them to help maybe be better develop the game plan side of it, right? We talked about having a great idea, but you also have to have the plan. 
could you offer any kind of tips or things that you've learned as you've grown this business over the years? Yeah, I actually have a great story. So I really like rollerblading like so much. And I was spending a ton of money on rollerblades. And so I called rollerblade and I was like, Hey, I have a paddleboard business in Arizona. Can I become a rep? And they're like, sure, <laughs> but you have to spend $10,000. And I was like, yeah, I, I could do it totally. And I literally I'm, just saw you rollerblading on your Instagram the other day. So I love I, <laughs> I did a rollerblading marathon in Duluth, Minnesota. It was so awesome. That's so great. So I'm talking to my rollerblade rep and he goes, Sarah, I have never talked to a skate shop owner that is willing to get on line and be like, buy these skates. They're so awesome. He's like, most of them are just scared and they just hope people are going to come to them. And so he found that very impressive. And so I was talking to a friend trying to sell puppies. And she's like, oh, I just hate getting on and selling these puppies. And I feel so cringy. And I go, this is your job. So create an online persona or your business persona. And so when you, and you could even say, oh, I have to do this annoying lady social media, but it's you. <laughs> and so I have to get online and I have to say, okay, here's where I'm skating today. Here's where I'm traveling today. And then I disconnect that from my regular life. So if it helps people, it's just your online persona. Most of us have only like 10 friends. So block those 10 friends and then tell the rest of the world about your business. I love it. That's a great tip. That's honestly a really, really good tip because we have, we talk to clients every single day. And I, I feel like I repeat that phrase all the time, but we talk to clients and to people every day that struggle with that very thing that they're like, gosh, I just, I just wish the phone would ring. I wish I didn't have to go out and do the marketing or go out on the internet and, and talk about carpet cleaning or whatever it is, right? Like they, they struggle with that concept. And I love the, 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 the psychology of separating the two and, yeah, just and disconnect it, disconnect <laughs> it. Yeah. And I love, I love saying, uh, I've got to go do this old lady's, uh, social media, this annoying lady's social media. I love phrasing it like that. Cause that's, we have to kind of trick our minds and be like, Hey, this is not me. This is the online version of me. I'm trying to grow my business. So this is what I got to do. This is, this is the thing I have to do. I love that. Katie, well, any, any, or sorry, Sarah, go ahead. It's kind of funny, but I love applying for reality shows and different TV shows. And just in the last six months, they've asked for all your social media handles. And so I've been a little bit more extra on my social media and my friends have been pointing it out. I'm like, it's a job guys. I'm trying to get on more shows. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's what I got to do. It's the thing yeah. I got to do. And it really helped business a lot too, actually. Katie, what, any, any addition to that with, with what Sarah's saying a little bit about entrepreneurship and maybe trying to kind of better develop the plan. The very first thing I thought of is just like, like, just don't be afraid. Just try it. Like what's the worst thing that can happen. Right. So often, like we're so sure we're going to fail at something that we never even get the opportunity to try it. And so, and when you're like, just do it, just like separate it out and go for it. Right. The root of that is fear. Like the thing that stops us is I'm going to fail. Somebody's going to make fun of me. This is not going to, like, all those fear things start just like piling up in our minds and then we stop. Right. And, and then it's like, well, it wouldn't have worked anyway, or, oh, it wasn't the right time, or I'm not that good online, whatever. Right. We start to then justify the reason why we didn't. Um, and, and it's just a roadblock. So I love that. I love it. Sarah just goes for it. Like she's like, oh, I'm just going to try it. See what happens. <laughs> And that is like the absence of fear. And that's not saying that the fear isn't in there for her, but it's like, it's so kind of back burner that I think that that's a, that's a great way to drive success. I saw Mel Robbins post an Instagram video and she said, I realized I feel jealousy when people are doing things I'm not doing. So like if my friend became a doctor, I would be so proud of them. But if my friend started a fitness business and they were more successful than me, then I would probably be pretty jealous. So always look at who you're getting criticism from. Are they doing anything that they're probably jealous? And so they're criticizing you because they feel inadequate around you. And so I've learned, I just need to not talk about business around those people and um, not also not care about their opinions because yeah. they're not doing anything with their life that is you know, I'm super impressed with or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like Brene Brown in her book, I think it's in her book, Dare to Lead. Um, Brene Brown has some really fantastic things. And, and one of them is in the arena. We actually have it in one of our offices here is called the arena. And that quote's hanging up on the wall. And it basically is just like, Hey, if somebody's not willing to get in the arena and get their butt kicked and do all the things that we do every day as entrepreneurs, like you don't need to worry about what they think about it. Right. So if you're not in the arena, 
I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to pay attention to what that criticism looks like and sounds like. So, and honestly, Sarah, one of the things I love the most about you is like, so a lot of times when we start talking, we start talking about the hard things, right. And the things that hold us back or the obstacles or different things like that. But I love talking to you because I remember like, oh yeah, guess what? Entrepreneurship is really fun. <laughs> like there is so, it is so much fun to jump in and figure things out. And even when it doesn't go as planned, like it's still fun to have that kind of love and passion for it. And I like to journal the whole journey. So like people find me entertaining when the, um, a, my trailer breaks or, you know, like, I can't believe how hard you work on this business. And so that part of it's still funny, you know? Yeah. Right, right. I love that. I, it should be fun. The, the journey should be fun even when it's, uh, even when it's tough, right. And you should enjoy doing what you do. And, and I love that. Yeah. You're that passionate about it, Sarah. That's awesome. So what's um, next? Like what's your, yeah, big, what, what's, what's your the goal next? Hit? What do you want to go after? I'm taking an acting class. So I did stand up comedy for a year and then I did a couple shows and I did pretty good. And so now I'm taking an acting class and I get to practice every week at goat yoga. I'm kind of like the ringmaster in the circus. Nobody cares if I'm there, but you need me to run the show. So <laughs> the people halfway listen to me, but I can practice my jokes. Right. Yep. And we get into a lot of corporate events with goat yoga, but I think it would be really cool if I could do some sort of public speaking, um, comedy comedian thing, without the goats. So that's what I'm working on. Then goat yoga helps me practice that. And that's, I think it's probably going to be a three to five year journey. That's what my comedy coach says. He's like a life coach. That's dysfunctional because you can only make fun of yourself and white men. So I have to come up with a lot of jokes about myself. <laughs> well, I love, I love that the goal is in three to five years, I want to be funny without the goats with me. Like that's so big. <laughs> <laughs> that's There's no awesome. billion dollars or anything <laughs> and yeah no big deal sarah's just going to become a comedian and maybe an actor too who, i mean who knows right like it's just no big deal well honestly i was like what is the hardest thing i can think of doing and it was stand-up comedy and i before my first show i serious that like i've never been so nervous about anything before and i was so nervous and i called my coach and he goes this is dumb we're in a strip mall in gilbert just get up there and have fun. He goes, you're just someone doing the job. And that really stuck with me. Like, we don't have to be perfect at anything. Like there's doctors that suck. You can yeah. just go be the person that does the job. There's teachers that aren't good. I can be a comedian that's not good, but I'm doing the job and I'll get better as I do it. But you're not going to get better until you actually go do it. Love it. Good advice. What good great advice. advice. I love that. Well, and that ties in right to the, to the questions we were going to ask you here at the end. Um, Sarah, this has been an awesome podcast. We appreciate all of the, the stories that you've shared and the insight. I want to close up the podcast with the same questions we ask all of our guests. You've already given some really, really awesome feedback and some great advice to our audience. But I, I want to kind of ask you, first and foremost, favorite book or podcast that you're reading or listening to right now? You held up one there. I don't know if that's the, the book you want to share with everybody, but any recommendations, podcast, books, anything? Um, I, there's a new podcast called money Mondays and it's an entrepreneur guy that just started that. And then there's a 10 minute entrepreneur one that I really like. Uh, this is the book for my acting class, but I have read laws of human nature probably 15 times because I had to, and it's by Robert green and all of Robert green stuff is really good, but I getting where you don't let people offend you it really takes a lot of thick skin. And so I had to step back and kind of figure out what people are going through, why they say mean things to me. So like if someone, like I was just telling you, you know, like they're not comfortable in their life. And so to not take offense to that and realize, okay, they're not comfortable in their life. That's why they're saying something mean to me. And it's not about me. So I have to keep going through this book and just be like, okay, people are a certain way because of how they grew up or whatever, and not let it bother me basically. So I love Robert Green stuff. That's a great recommendation. I don't that we, we, we've done 80 plus of these episodes now and we get, I love when we get new recommendations. There's a lot of repeats. That was an awesome recommendation. Oh, it's a Thank rabbit you. hole. Just know you're opening up yourself. I'm opening up the Robert, Robert Green. Green rabbit hole. I love it. Okay. Next question. Okay. Um, you obviously, because of all the different things that you're doing and trying to do, you wear a lot of hats. You have a lot going on, um, in your life. How do you relax at the end of a long day? How do you recharge the mental emotional batteries there's an app called fit mind and i love it it's really um i, I the guy that 
he like traveled all over the world and studied every kind of meditation he can think of. And so I do that for 10 to 30 minutes every day around one. And it was a hundred dollars a year. And that was really hard for me to pay that much for an app. But after trying the free trial a couple of times, <laughs> I decided to go for that. And then I love rollerblading and hiking and swimming. So basically all of my passions that are kind of my jobs that I love doing all that stuff too. Oh, and I love travel. Oh, that's great. I love the, the, the meditation thing. Um, it's something I'm trying. I don't know if I've, I would call it meditation, but trying to, I'm trying to practice mindfulness, yeah. which is this new weird concept that two years ago, I'd be like, what the heck is practicing mindfulness, but like trying to like genuinely like shut my brain off, like put the phone away and go do something like where I have to really focus on it. Like go for a walk with the dog and my wife or go to dinner and again, shut the phone off and have a conversation with another person, right? Like I'm truly trying to practice that. And I feel like that's a great, a great thing that I'm trying to develop as well. I don't know if you can tell, but maybe I'm a little ADD. And so (laughs) I read this book, Living with Monks. And he's very, he's the guy that does living with Navy SEALs too. So the monk book, they, and he had to leave the monk place early because he was going so crazy, but he would just have to wash the dishes and be mindful. And so that's something I really try to work on. Like you're going to do the dishes and you're only going to think about the dishes and that's been yeah. hard, but then I'm not worrying about other stuff. Cause I'm like, yep. now it's time for dishes. Now it's time for work. And it's almost a stoic kind of get through the day approach. I love that. Cause that's too, and I, and I didn't even it's it's cool that I'm, well, I don't know if it's cool, but it's something that I'm trying to do better of now, like practicing the mindfulness thing. My two favorite passions, the two things that I do the most, I would say outside of work are like, I, lo- I love to fish and I love to golf, right? And those two things force you to have to think about only them, which yep. in turn helps, right? Like it, that totally helps to like, hey, you have to only focus on this one thing or you, you're going to suck at it. And so that's like, it's totally been a way for me to help like refocus my brain and be like, I'm going to go shut my brain off by doing this. And I, yeah, yep. it's, it's awesome. Um, last question. Okay. If you could rewind to the beginning of it all, I don't know if you want to rewind to the beginning, you know, maybe American Ninja Warrior or, you know, earlier than that to one of your first businesses that you kind of kicked off. But if you could rewind to the beginning and tell younger Sarah one thing, what would that one thing be? You know, I don't think I would have changed anything. And I'm almost questioning myself more. I'm 45 right now. And I'm like, why am I questioning myself now? I've never questioned myself in the past. And again, it was back to that human nature and people giving me a hard time about stuff. But when you're young, people encourage you and they want to help you. And so I wouldn't change anything because then I was like, I have this idea. And older people would be like, go for it. You can do it. You know? And I think at the age I'm at right now, people question me a lot more. And so I had that epiphany a couple months ago. I'm like, I never used to question myself. So I, it was better when I was younger. <laughs> if you're young, just go for it. You know, I, I the, we, we've had a couple of people on that have said kind of this similar and I, and it's something that I've tried to kind of reinvent in my brain that like, it's okay to try new things, especially when you're younger, like, don't be afraid, like, don't be afraid to try those new things. Don't be afraid. Like there, there's going to be mistakes along the way. And if you kind of accept that and move on and um, you know, there, I, I've, I've had this other phrase that that's kind of bounced around in my head that like, if it's not um, if it's not going to matter in five years, don't give it five minutes. So like if, if the, what you're really stressing about right now, if it's really not going to matter for you in five years from now, don't let it, like eat away at you for more than five minutes, right? Like don't, don't allow those things to like you, you to trip up on them or get frustrated with them or, or cause it any more stress than it should, because ultimately like, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to, you're you and your family and, and your business, like those things you're going to be able to be, you're, you're going to be able to overcome those challenges Um, if you just keep pushing on and that's, that's awesome, awesome advice. So, well, I really, I really dove into stoicism because as life gets comfortable, um, you kind of become entitled. (laughs) And so a lot of stoicism is when everything's comfortable, try to make something hard and then just live each day. Cause you never know if it's going to be your last. And so I don't want to be comfortable today. I want to push myself today. Cause what if this is my last day? It's a little bit morbid, but I love the stoicism approach yep. to life should be hard. Life shouldn't be cushy and easy. You know, it's great. Sarah, thank you. This is an awesome, awesome podcast. Um, I know our audience is going to get some great value out of this. Um, you had some great, great insight and 
we hope to have you on again in the future. We would love to talk about all of you. You just have your, your wealth of stories. You have so many, so many cool stories about, I would love, I would seriously love to just have you on and talk about the amazing race. That's seriously one of my favorite shows. And so it would be, that would be a cool conversation for another time. But seriously, I, I just, I really appreciate you coming on. And yeah, again, we hope to have you on in the future. So yeah, if you're in Arizona, come do a class, go let's to do yoga. It. Katie, let's do it. Go That's Sarah. what we got to do. Oh, yeah. All right. Should we as a matter of fact, let's just get Sarah out here to Idaho. I can get a field and some goats, Sarah. Oh so. yeah. We could figure <laughs> we'll that out. You, we'll get you out this way. That's what <laughs> come do a little company retreat. Train yoga goats. The regular goats don't work. Yes. You gotta Our have Idaho the special goats, goats are not going to do the trick right nope. there. So, nope. okay. Before we let you go real quick, why don't you tell people where they can find you? Um, if they want to follow you or connect goatyoga.com. We got that domain. Pretty proud of that. And then um, Desert Paddleboards right now, I'm kind of trying to rebrand that into more a travel tourism company. And so we'll just see what happens. Always going up with new ideas. All right. If we're in Arizona, we're coming to see you for sure. Love it. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Success Elevated, making you a little bit better one show at a time. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe on YouTube or any other major podcast platform to listen to more episodes. We are proudly brought to you by Spot On Solutions. If you'd like to learn more about how we can help you grow your business, please check us out at spotonsolutions.com.